<laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Let me ask you a quick question. Anybody in this audience, did anybody take an international trip in the last year? Say yes. yes. Thank you. This is a little bit about you, but all international travelers. I'm a medical doctor. And after my experiences as a Peace Corps doctor in the Philippines and in Bolivia, I chose a career in public health, specializing in infectious disease control. Things like epidemics, outbreaks of disease, vaccination programs, stuff like that. And I started my career in the 70s at the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, which you may know about. Uh, and I have dealt with epidemics, some of which uh, were actually started by international travelers. Uh, and so tonight, what I want to do is share some experiences that started me thinking about what can we do to help travelers stay healthy while they travel and at the same time not become spreaders of disease. And we need to be concerned about travelers. A traveler inadvertently brought Zika virus to the Western Hemisphere. And we now know for sure that this virus attacks the brain of the newborn, or of the fetus, as it is developing, and causes severe damage. But interestingly, also, about 80% of the people that get infected with this virus don't know it, because their symptoms are mild or not at all. And so they can spread the disease to the mosquitoes, the mosquitoes spread the disease to others, the same kind of problem. Can we do something about this? Yes, and I'll come back to that. Now, some people think that you can stop infectious disease at the border. Maybe by using some modern technology like this infrared scanner that detects people with fevers as they arrive in airports. Now that's a good, uh, it works a little bit, but it won't stop them. And the reason, won't stop infectious diseases, and the reason is quite simple. Infectious diseases have incubation periods. That's the time from when you become infected to the time when you become sick. And during that time, you feel well, you look well, you travel well, you're undetectable. And when you travel, and while traveling or when you get home, you might uh, inadvertently spread the virus or, the, or that you've been infected with. So travelers can be spreaders, or maybe not. And I'll come back to that. So let me tell you about some of my experiences. And back in the 1980s, I was the director of infectious disease control uh, for the World Health Organization in the Americas. And in, in June of 1982, some colleagues and friends from CDC in Atlanta called to tell me about five very sick young gay men in California. As it turns out, these were the first five cases of HIV AIDS. And you know the rest of the story. We, had a we have a global epidemic of this virus spread by people traveling around the world. But the point I want to make also is that at that time, there was no early alert system. There was no way that we could know that there was a deadly virus silently spreading by travelers around the world. Let me fast forward to the mid-90s and another personal experience. I was working now at the Canadian Department of Health in Ottawa. And sitting in my office, I happened to notice that CNN was showing live TV footage of people fleeing the city of Surat in India. And, oh, why? Well, because there was a, an epidemic of mnemonic plague in the city. Now, mnemonic plague is the worst kind of plague you can get. It's spread easily by coughing, and it causes a pneumonia that if it's not treated promptly, it's fatal in about 24 hours. A bad problem. But I thought, pretty far away from Canada, Surat, India, about an hour later, I got a call from the manager of Toronto's Pearson Airport, who said, uh, by the way, they watch TV in Toronto, too. <laughs> he said, there's an Air India flight that's going to be arriving in Toronto Air Pearson Airport in a couple of hours, and the 30,000 workers are going to walk off the job and go home, because they're afraid that there's pneumonic plague on board that Air India flight. He said, Ron, we have to do something. 
I said, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah we do. Now this is a snapshot. <laughs> As I was hanging up the phone, the staff took this shot of me trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> well, I decided uh, to send one of my best quarantine officers, Dr. Brian Gushalak, uh, to Toronto uh, to try to get there uh, before the Air India flight arrived and explain to people that it was really not possible for a pneumonic plague to be on the Air India flight. Well, he got there. Uh, and he uh, got there in time, and he was able to persuade people to calm down. And we averted an international incident, but we scrambled to do that, just like we scrambled after HIV. So we started thinking, can't we do, can't we do better than that? Can't we find out some, some way to get information about what's going on in the world with infectious diseases, and so that we can be better prepared, just in case something happens to come to Canada? Well, a colleague and I put our heads together, and uh, we uh, started thinking about this thing called the internet. <laughs> and couldn't we get the information we were looking for on this new thing called the internet? But, well, at that time, a lot of you in the audience won't believe this, but at that time, the very best search engine uh, would take, it was slow, and would take about a whole month to scan the entire internet one time. But we needed information a lot faster than that. Uh, and so we started thinking, well, what about that CNN? What about newspapers that publish reports of epidemics in their local cities? What about newswire services? And so to cut the chase, we created something called the Global Public Health Intelligence Network, GPHIN, or GFIN for short. Now, GFIN was the very first computer-based system to monitor 24 hours a day the net worldwide news media. And it worked. And even today, GFIN still provides governments and organizations like WHO and CDC with early alerts about what is happening around the world. Later on, I thought, Gee, shouldn't the traveler have the same kind of information? Shouldn't the traveler have early alerts so they can stay healthy wherever they are? And if there's a problem where they are, maybe they can take some preventive measures, simple things, use your bug repellent, whatever, and maybe not get infected, and maybe not become a carrier of disease. Now back to, back to the travelers. Now, I hope you believe me when I say that Travelers can start epidemics. This video you see behind me is a collage of 24 hours worth of global airplane flights. This was in 2008. It's a lot more crowded now. Last year, the uh, IATA uh, estimated that there were about 3 billion, 3 billion passenger trips. Any one person getting off one of these planes might start the next epidemic. And we humans, we've been starting epidemics for a long time. Back in the 1300s, travelers brought plague into Europe. In the, at the beginning of the last century, people took Spanish flu across the world and millions of people died. And more recently, we've had SARS, we've had chikungunya, and of course, we have Zika. Can we do something about this? I think we can. The first thing is, I think we can do something to help the travelers avoid becoming spreaders of disease. But how can we do that? Well, I believe that we can give travelers the same kind of alert, early alerts directly to the traveler. So while they're abroad, they can maybe take the necessary prevention measures they need to take. But how can you deliver the information directly to the traveler? Well, my son, who's an engineer and I, put our heads together and we created a company called Citata. Now Citata uses modern technology to scan hundreds of thousands of information sources in minutes. And it uses some artificial intelligence to separate the things we're really interested in, the critical information, from background noise. And then it delivers that information directly to the traveler through their mobile phone. 24-7, the early alerts, wherever they are, 
free, at no charge. And that information, if the traveler will pay attention, will help them take the necessary prevention measures and not become the next spreader of disease. I believe that modern technology can save lives and it'll help travelers avoid starting the next epidemic. And I sincerely hope that we can, can contribute to either preventing or at least minimizing the next global epidemics. Thanks very much for your attention.